Let's get some more detail on the major recall coming from the Japanese automaker Toyota. We've got an expert, Stephen Spear, a senior lecturer at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and also the author of Chasing the Rabbit, How Market Leaders Outdistance the Competition. Stephen Spear, welcome to Bloomberg. Hey, Tim, good to be back. Thank you. Stephen, explain what happened at Toyota. Did they sacrifice quality in pursuit of growth? Yes, yeah, so that's, a, I think, a very uh, convenient and certainly um, uh, high-fidelity explanation. So if you think about Toyota's uh, history and, and the source of its great success, it was uh, built on quality. They entered the market uh, in, the, in the U.S., especially in the 70s, with small fuel-efficient cars in response to the OPEC price spikes. People started driving those cars, and they just kept going and going and going. And... Uh, they said, wow, these cars are great and reliable and durable and all of that. And that became the, uh, the basis for uh, Toyota's uh, reputation. And um, that ability to generate just tremendous quality and reliability was uh, rooted uh, very deeply in a broad-based capacity inside Toyota and within uh, inside its supplier network um, to have just relentless, very high-speed problem solving going on all the time everywhere. Uh, little problems, big problems, whatever it was. You get to the late 90s and uh, one of Toyota's leaders said something about Toyota being the number one car company in the world and uh, having 15 percent market share within a very short period. And uh, in a company which uh, subordinated everything else towards quality and the development of the skills that uh, helped them uh, achieve quality and like the Lexus uh, tag, you know, the relentless pursuit of perfection, it creates this dilemma. Are we relentlessly pursuing perfection or are we relentlessly pursuing growth? And I think if uh, when, when we do the uh, post-mortem on this accelerator pedal problem, we'll find that uh, this problem has its roots in that period around uh, 99, 2000, 2001, when the company was growing a little faster than uh, it was developing capacity and knowledge about the products it was making. So did it open factories faster than it should have? Was it stretching supply networks? Well, I, I think, um, you know, in hindsight, you know, we can always say, yeah, probably uh, faster than they care to. And I think there's a lot of agreement probably within Toyota on this, too. Uh, you know, you think about the company, um, for a long time it was uh, Toyota City-based uh, mid-market cars. And, uh, you know, we saw in the uh, 80s and into the 90s, it expands its uh, model variety under the Toyota nameplate, expands its brands, uh, Lexus and Scion, has this big jump in techno technological sophistication, which hit the whole industry with the onboarding of uh, tremendous electronics onto cars. And Toyota's case, electronics plus the, the hybrid drive. So they were going uh, gangbusters in terms of growth. And the thing is, um, it's one thing to open a factory and uh, hire people, but it's a whole world different to develop those people, both in the factory and your design studios and your supplier network, develop people who are just exceptional at seeing problems, solving problems, and then incorporating uh, this newfound knowledge in how they do their work. Well, Stephen, have they been applying that same kind of ethos to solving this particular problem? Yeah, so I got a so when I've when I've looked at Toyota and worked with Toyota in the past, one of the things that really strikes me, and I've written about this somewhat, is their capacity to recover from crisis makes it appear that there actually wasn't a crisis. You know, losing uh, entire factories and uh, being up and running within three days. I mean, they're just really good at this. And so the technical problem, I have great confidence that they've got the internal capacity to deal with the technical problem. The, the problems which really are going to uh, stress Toyota going forward are not the technical ones, but it's the organizational and the commercial. All right. And it looks like they've got a long road ahead of them. I want to thank you very much, uh, Stephen Spears, senior lecturer, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and also the author of uh, Chasing the Rabbit, How Market Leaders Outdistance the Competition.